evening welcome to the weekly outlook hope you're well uh let me just check a few things here make sure i've got some things set up cool so as it stands hopefully you guys had a great weekend um, and you've enjoyed the previous weekly outlooks if you want to use the ones previously there'll be clearly some very good information the things i'm going to go through tonight will clearly be stated in what we've already done in the previous outlooks we're in similar positions to before which is great to see so we can definitely use that to our advantage and we can see how previous price has moved in a very similar or general direction of what we expected and uh, now we can move again and add to that as we move forward um just want to thank those in the community that were with us uh, for the weekly well sorry for the webinar we did which was um, around three hours long yesterday which was phenomenal um about the uh, the network itself uh, obviously the accountability and mindset required within trading um it's very good discussion hopefully you guys get the opportunity to actually go and look into that um in here itself actually we have as you as you well know on the, in the g drive itself obviously we've put it in the section which is helpful links and videos um which is in there number 19 use that to advantage it is also posted in slack where it is found uh but yeah it's a very good weekend um and you know after we got through that and had some really good discussions during that hopefully that opens your eyes for some of the things going for the future that we're going to be doing here and also um you know the accountability is required from yourself um not just from a mindset perspective for your individual process but you know assisting those around you which is clearly the most important thing within the community that's the whole point it's arranged and that's you know hopefully what we can do going forward so one of the things i want to point out is hopefully you guys have been using the g drive properly um and making notes and things and obviously trying to adapt to certain things that i've posted out in the past um you would have seen last week very clearly if you go over the week and actually do the things that we required to as traders to you know establish our understanding and try and improve on a daily basis to gain that extra little kind of let's say advantage to the market and things that we can identify as you know, clear that we can give us a, a factor it's just one example here from last week if you go over the week itself and pretty much over the last two three four weeks um you can use the things in the playbook and you can see here an exact example of that which was on the i can't remember which day this was actually it's probably 20 i think it's the 21st or something 22nd you can see exactly what we're looking at in regards to using these to your advantage you can adapt them as much as you wish but the, the fundamental outlook of the behavior of them areas and what we should expect to see is exactly what we see here and how we can use our time frames mid time frames trading in range trading outside of range not getting caught in fake outs and dumb shit you know they're the type of things that we can really utilize by using what we've what we've already got and then on top of that the more experience you gain you can adapt obviously looking at things like this here to the left we can use this to our advantage and identify things like this after seeing ranges creating structure well, obviously understanding direction prior to marking our clear areas of direction how we identify these specific areas how we can identify hard time frame targets if, if if needs be you know the opportunities that are there it's very clear to identify obviously you can flip this upside down and start using it from the opposite direction as well there's multiple of these obviously as you well know so please don't overlook these things if you're a position where you're struggling or you're which to be fair there's very few people now in the community that you know are at that level um there's a lot of people actually what we're talking about this weekend were to be fair because the community is what it is and it's a closed community at this point uh you know invite only as such and it has been for a long time we can clearly see the progression of individuals uh and at this point after you know three plus years or however long it's been going we can clearly see where people's levels are and this is where you've got to identify your personal situation and understand that you actually are so much further ahead than you you probably can identify yourself so it's about taking a step back and you know just understanding how far you actually come in that time um if you are still finding certain, certain things are an issue or you know a little bit of inconsistency in your approach and stuff just refresh your mind a little bit go over some of the basic concepts and understandings and things so you can identify where and when you should and shouldn't be in a trade the basics you know understanding where your main areas of interest are within a session obviously coming back from our higher time frame analysis things that we do on for example which you all should all be doing weekly outlooks in regards to what you expect to see and then utilizing potentially things that i do and some of the other guys that are clearly ahead of the game at this point that have been in the community a long time using that to then kind of transfer their views that there might be slightly a, a little bit ahead in experience and stuff so they may have things there that you can then go oh yeah yeah i didn't really under i didn't really see that myself but that's your education and this is where you've got to understand education isn't just a book where you can just go oh well, i've read it I'm, i know what to do um it's a case of constant progression based on you know individual growth as that will come through experience of gaining it from others using others around you that are clearly ahead <clears throat> understanding that there is debate in trading it's not necessarily going to be a 100 percent win rate because one man said x and that's how it is that's not what it's going to be and I've, I've clearly put that and stated that from day one there is no way to trade 
like me. I don't want to people to trade like me. I don't put a course out there. I don't write books. I don't say this is a specific strategy. It's just what I do. And the fact is, it works well enough for, for me and my eyes and the concepts and things that I've added throughout the years have clearly started to, you know, progress me as an individual. Those that you watch on YouTube, all the, you know, the big names, this and the other. you're actually sitting back, you're actually watching their personal progression as an individual. And you're actually seeing from their beginnings where whether they come across as very good, it's still progressing in their life and that their, their trading ability. It's very important to understand that you're still watching an, another individual in this world, you know, finding new ways to do better in what they currently are undertaking. So the task at hand is to, you know, find profitable trades and then ultimately they will find better ways to do so. So just looking at things like that, as you've got on the screen, that's just one example of very, very well versed kind of understanding. There's tons of stuff in there, as we well know, and, you know, Use them to your advantage. There's loads of bits and bobs, as we know, in the G-Drive that we can use to our advantage. One of the things is which this week I'd like to point out, obviously, fundamental outlooks. Um, as you well know, we've now got a huge catalogue of this courtesy of a, a, a person that we, we've, you know, is very much just looking to support as we go forward. So using that and obviously what's in Slack, obviously the effort that's been put in here, you can clearly understand a lot of the factors. And obviously, like we said before, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper as we move forward. So obviously, hopefully people are slowly growing their fundamental understanding by using the things that are provided going and reading about certain factors because we do need to understand fundamentals to an extent and like i said it's not the be all end all of all as for what we do from a price action standpoint we don't necessarily need to know everything about fundamentals from that concept however it's very in, it, well for those that are bothered let's say it's very interesting to understand why things happen in the market and it, it will give you a little bit of an edge to understand for example, this week, as like I said, we, we, we don't go through these things massively in these sessions because it's more of a technical outlook added to things that we will talk about live during the week. So if you want to talk about things like, for example, FOMC leading up this week, and obviously what the, the euro decisions last week that were hugely impactful in the market, they're all there and explained, and that's where you can use that to your advantage. So please understand this side of things which you've got in front of you. Use it to your advantage and make sure you're making the effort to go and research these things because, again, that's part of your job as an individual to progress as, as, as such, right? So... Take note, obviously, in, in the G-Driver cell, like I said, the webinar, just so you can all understand where it is. Helpful videos and links. Obviously, you've got the tutorials and all the other sections anyway. But the helpful videos and links from this one specifically, number 19, down bottom left, that's the one that we've banged in there. So that's the one that you're going to be using this week as such. And go and, use, go and make the most of it. You know, it's a very good discussion point. So what can we do leading into this week? So ooh, hang on a minute. Let me just get rid of that. So basically what we're looking at pretty much, hopefully, if those of you that were paying attention last week, we had, oh, I probably should get rid of them. Hang on one second. Let me get rid of these because that's a bit of a headache. Them. I wish there's a way to just delete all them in one go. Right. So what did we talk about last week? So pretty much we had heavy news this week. We've had a lot of stuff going on across the board. Obviously, we've had... Big, big movements prior to this as well in, in multiple charts across the board, which we're all well aware of. Obviously, this is a continuation from our, you know, weekly, monthly, quarterly outlook, which is all, you know, documented as we move forward. Last week's weekly outlook, pretty much on point again, as you can see, where we pushed up into the higher time frames at daily resistances. Once we got to our main overall targets, we started to see some conditions of breakdown and kind of inconsistency range. And then obviously with the news, we started to get a heavy push down towards the end of the week, which is cool. What can we see? Don't forget last week is the key at this point uh, we're in the same similar position to where we started the week in theory right so we've not really done an awful lot we've pushed up to high time frames we've come back and we've started to create some form of downside now at this point these areas here i'm not going to go through them again how why how and why they're uh, so important and why these areas are important because they are on the previous daily weekly outlooks right go and use them to your advantage because we've already talked about how this is going to be as important as we said so go and use that to your advantage what is it we can see at this point? Well, clearly from a weekly perspective, we've started to see a heavy rejection from our resistance levels, which is our 2022 high area, right? So our main huge body of resistance where if we start to break back, let's say, from our higher time frame perspective, <clears throat> we know our, he our heavy main resistance is here. We've attempted to break through this multiple times and we start to cr create some form of support in there and start to break down. We're seeing again, as per last week, as we're in a similar area, Huge rejections from these similar areas, heavy breakdown, and then rejections from a higher position, which keeps us in this range above 61. So at this point, realistically, we're looking for potential downside now. After seeing this heavy rejection from this area, 
we now need to identify are we going to get some further down so we can't just assume because obviously that's not what we do in the market we're not here just to guess we're here to use specifics and information and data given and then use that to our advantage so at this point yeah it looks like we may well see some downside however we clearly can see the, the dangers we have here so we don't want to be just saying oh it sounds makes sense because that's just kind of a dumb thought process yes we may well see some but we do need to see some clarity there so obviously after one big heavy move on the end of friday let's say <clears throat> or through friday we can't just assume continuation we still need structure we still need to see constant breakdowns we still need to see the opportunities to gain ourselves into trade because in essence we should have been in trades pretty much uh, midway through london session uh friday if you're looking to sell this long term right so we, we're way way behind we're hours and hours and hours and hours behind where the better opportunities would have come from this is just at this point the continuation of the original move that began pretty much friday morning so at this point we now need to ascertain targets identify things that we've already spoke about in regards to our higher time frame analysis which we've already clearly gone through in weekly outlooks what can we see well we've had three solid downside candles at this point big factor again do not underestimate this area here between here and here based on the daily outlooks and the webinar which is dated june the 5th go and use it because that's exactly what we're starting to identify now if we want to see some further downside we need a target formed now we've already identified that this area here can well be a target if we started to see downside last week it could well have been downside for some further upside in regards to liquidity to continue up away from our heavy levels of you know break away from our main lows and stuff so at this position we may well start to see some of this but what would be good to see would be if we start to see some rejection anywhere in these kind of areas and we start to take advantage of this position here and see downside we would have created a targetable area we can look for rejections from this area if we start to see a push to the upside obviously at the start of the week maybe a day or two we have got heavy news during wednesday which is going to be potentially day not to say dangerous volatility in the market wednesday up until wednesday may well be very very uh, let's say mediocre and strange it may well give it you know some pushes some negativity some you know positive it may well a little bit all over the place until we get the, the the decision from like fmoc and stuff like that we can use that to our advantage and then from there we may well have some very good opportunities leading into next month obviously we are coming towards the end of the month as well so we do need to keep that in mind um like i said looking at this area here where we like i said i'm not going to go through it again i want to keep it as brief as i can July, sorry, June the 5th webinar, which is already posted everywhere. I think it's on YouTube as well, actually. But that is the one that we're looking at still in reality because we're still in the same areas and them areas are clearly still begin, becoming a factor. What we spoke about last week on last week's weekly outlook was look for a breakout of this area. Once that's done, we can then start to ascertain main targets and then come to our main range of resistance based on the daily. We struggled to break through that for two days straight. We had opportunities that I've just showed you, obviously, to take buys and sells around them areas. And then once we started to see this daily candle breakdown, there's opportunities still to look for pullbacks to upside or look for continuation to downside. Obviously, selling into here is going to be very tough, and that may well have put some people off. It did cause a problem for a little while. And then once we broke through the continuation to the downside area of targets, clearly gave opportunities later in the day to push heavy. So at that position, we can clearly see what we're looking at there. So main targetability from an upside standpoint is clearly going to be here. No question at this point, if we start to see that. However, do not do the same thing as what people did here and get caught out at this position. Like I'm saying, watch very carefully around the area. Realistically, you want to start seeing four hour candles either break through this area at 164 and then look for pullbacks that create support there to continue the move. So you may end up with a similar scenario to this again. I'll draw it just for the uh, but for the gram we may well see something similar to this now if we start to see something similar to this this is where you've just got to be very careful and understand the best opportunities will be after this has happened or pushing past this position if we start to see that however based on the current heavy downside we've got here we may well start to see rejections from this area right so we, we sorry i completely drew the candle wrong around there my bad but you might well be starting to see rejections from around that area to use this level wherever the beginning of this week goes let's say we do this at the start of the week this will become the target level so at that position the target will be here and then anything pulling back this way will give us the opportunity to create resistance target this and then ultimately push all the way back down to probably 58 59 would be a clear factor but we do need to understand so we break through this main specific area kind of yeah kind of 63 50 400 the, the opportunity for us to push all the way through there is limited and it's not going to happen until we see what we spoke about last week so use that to your advantage so that's pretty much what i'm going to be looking for this week if we start to see 
solid pullbacks into this area that respect this area. Last week's weekly outlook explained what I'll be looking for at that position. I would be targeting 64 at that stage. And then anything closing this way from a daily standpoint will give me the opportunity on four hours and less to then look for structure in these areas to then get candles, let's say on four hours breaking above 64 that would target then the daily highs and then ultimately look back to the daily high resistance. Because in essence, we are still pretty bullish in this market, although it's now becoming a little bit more of a range scenario, right? So looking at what we've got here from a from a monthly higher time frame standpoint, we've spoke about this a lot. So obviously we get the white lines for now, it looks a bit messy, but you know the you know the drill. We've spoke hugely about this area and the impact of that left lots. Well, we obviously know what this is and the whole structure that was created here until we saw our breakthrough. Once we got the rejections of lows, the rejections of highs, the continuation to hit targets becomes the same factor. We are still looking to reside above this level overall to look for continuation, which at this point we've tried, as you can see, we've, we've tried to, we've closed outside this area prior to now last month. And then this month, we've had the opportunity to come to those. We've pushed up and we've managed to make highs for the month, but not extend this area because this is a heavy ass kind of resistance that we spoke about on the daily and the weekly. So at that point, we've tapped into there. We struggled and now we start to come out. However, based on the monthly, we are not seeing negativity at this stage. Do not get carried away and think sales make more sense at this stage from a higher time frame. Clearly not. Now, things will need to change going forward fundamentally to make that a longer term continuation to the downside. But at this point, all we can physically see is range and very much inconsistency between kind of 66 and a half and kind of down to 62. That is the main area of range at this point that we're clearly seeing rejections from. Now, if we start to pull back and then break down below 64, like I said, we can then target the lows of this week. You get me? Then we can start to look for continuation. In essence, we may well start to see a candle similar to this that respects our next resistance and maybe comes into this area. It doesn't mean we're going to continue this way, but we may well see some of this. Either way, we would know when and when not to be in and out the trade because this area here is going to be the most important, I would have thought. Now we've also got resistance at the same level on a high time frame. So use that to your advantage at this week because I generally think we may well have a very inconsistent week leading into uh, midweek with the news. And obviously the ongoings from over this weekend where it may well have a factor at the beginning of this week. So we just need to keep that in our minds. But pretty much at this stage, from a four hourly perspective, it's very clear. We start to break down heavy downside after our London session, which gave us the opportunity. Once again, you can see how we can be as accurate as we need to be based on the higher time frame, the accuracy of pullbacks for further downside or potential lower time frame bias to specific areas, which is pretty much what we spoke about on the day. And then obviously once that broke down, the continuation of that is clear. We can then start to go back to last week's weekly outlook. How important will this area, this area, et cetera, be on the way down? We can already see once we tapped into there, we struggled and pulled back heavy. And again, towards the end of the week, we started to see some break back to this way. Clearly, on a lower time frame downside at this point. So we do need to realistically find some form of structure, i.e. pullbacks and then continuation to the downside. We can then look for that. Just looking to take sales there. You're kind of dumb as fuck in my opinion. But uh, yeah, then again, you know, it depends what type of level of ability you are. And if you're just going to be the guy that wants to, I'm just going to take sales, fine. But just understand that sales should have been over here or in these areas prior to now. And this should be already in the move, you see. And so you can manage a position and look for further downside, what have you, what have you. So just be cautious. We're just jumping in the market Monday morning, just expecting further downside. Don't get carried away with that because overall we are still pretty much, although it's more starting to become a consolidation range on higher timeframes like weeklies, dailies and stuff, monthlies are still extremely bullish in nature. Although the candle's showing negative, it's not closed at this point. We've still got a few days left of the month. I'm not saying we're going to close bullish, but either way, we've seen it multiple times before, but we've seen a very negative candle with a big, big wick that then gives us the continuation on the next month or next quarter or whatever it might be. We see in the potential here as well. If we start to reject this kind of area we spoke about and we start pushing up here by the end of the week, we're going to have a very similar candle that gives us this scenario, which would make sense to create resistance at this, excuse me, rejections from this support level. Why? Because we've already seen it a thousand fucking times already from a daily standpoint. There's no question we know that's there. So let's just not get carried away and trying to sell into it again may well cause us a heavy headache. So clear factor would be to break down and understand where we can keep seeing these rejections, which is the area I've just spoke about. Trying to sell into there is going to be a fucking death sentence to an extent. So you can if you've got your opportunities to come up here and hold to this position potentially. But we do need to understand our higher, resist uh, our higher support formations there clearly could be a danger. From a seller standpoint in a lower time frame session trading between a set time and a set time so just clearly use that to your advantage 
and you're going to have to really maximize the usage of volume at this point. Hopefully you guys have been paying attention and taking note of when you're seeing the main volume pushes. We know it's not just always, you know, London open, that's it. There is a little delay in some cases. There might be slightly before. We can identify these things by taking notes over, you know, efficiency and seeing what we do in regards to, you know, what data do we keep to keep understanding that that's moved slightly over time? Or we start to see a little bit later than normal or a bit earlier than, you see, they're the things, the little nuances that we need to really capitalize on because that's the little edge that we can gain ourselves by, you know, just simply stepping up. Um, when it comes to four hour, like I said, from my perspective, I still would like to see at this stage, I'm very cautious of this area. Maybe it's unrequired, but either way, based on the dailies and the way we what we spoke about last week about potential rejections from this area or above this area, that's where we can start to identify what makes more sense after this candle. The upside was clear from it's quite clear, and that's what we were looking for after the end of the week, and that's what we got. So now we start to see again structural positioning where we got the breakdown as such. We can start looking for the downside. Now we're coming to here that may well be a factor. We just got to ask the question. We don't necessarily need to predict. We just need to, you know, we know that this could well be an area of danger. If you want to sell into it, crack on, but I'm not going to because that's my opinion. I would look for pullbacks to then at least find that my target can be there. And then if we do break through laughing, I should be looking to these areas here to identify a higher time frame breakdowns, which should then ultimately continue into the downside negativity into, you know, 58, 59 is no question. However, until we see it, we can't just assume. And that's where a lot of people unfortunately fail in trading because they just expect now daily downside. Okay, press sells on this candle. You could simply just press sells there and see what's up. But that's not really trading. That's more of a guest job. If we pull back and do this, yeah, you worked out well. But the drawdown required at that point is, well, if you want to play that game, cool. We can also do a lot better than that, right? So this is why we do an outlook. As for higher time, excuse me, as for the higher time frame, like I said, the daily we can clearly see has created a, a kind of heavier range at this point. We know our main target highs from our, let's say, our monthlies and weeklies and overall 2022 highs have already been established, struggled to break up to that level, tried to foul it again, pull back, given the resistances that break down. But again, we still keep getting these structural upsides that gives, in theory, this could just be relief in the market before we see some bigger upside later in the year, later in the quarter, whatever. We don't know. Or we could start to be beginning a range of consolidation, which starts to show signs of breakdown. Even if we bust into here, trust me, you will find opportunities to smash into this because all the time we've been bullish in nature, we get these heavy ass pullbacks that everyone always talks about. But oh, it sells. No, it's not. It will continue in most cases because they are. GJ, they are the way it forms. So we see heavy pullbacks of, you know, 100, 200, 300 pips in some cases. And then that week still ends up, you know, 300 pips in a bullish nature, for example. So look at the monthlies and see how big them wicks are. And you can clearly understand that's a fact. So even if we do push down to here from a seller standpoint, cool, you don't even need to catch that bit. You know, in reality, we should have already been in these trades if you're looking to sell. But at that point, it wasn't really a seller bias in that, in that respect, if you know what I mean, to hold long term. Clearly not. But if we do start to see targetability being pushing out to the areas, these areas here clearly most important that we spoke about higher time frame a long time ago. And then that's from our month, this is from 2021. And then we can identify anything creating targets down below these areas. We can then start to look for exactly what we're seeing here in these big areas, huge pullbacks. Look for the pullbacks and then look for breakdowns of structure and then start to take the trades to ascertain maybe targets in here that will continue multiply to the higher time frame levels. Pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, I think you'll agree. I don't know if anyone here has got. Um, good evening, everyone that's in the chat. Sorry, I've just seen. I've just opened my chat. Good evening, all. So I am paying attention. That's pretty much all I'm looking for this week. Obviously, with the news we've got coming up and what happened with the euro over the end of the week, it's something that we probably want to use the first day of the week to our advantage and realistically start to ascertain: Are we going to start to create a support? A support of not. Uh, sorry, are we going to create a form of support or not? If we're not, then at that stage, we can look for lower time frame continuations to whatever targets are formed and continue in that nature. If we don't see that and we wake up and we start to see some upside, don't just get assuming buys make more sense. Utilize this area here between them two points of interest. That will give you the best opportunity, in my opinion, based on what we've seen multiple times since way before July, excuse me, June. We can use them weekly outlooks, which again, like I said, I'll post it up, go back and use them to advantage. The last three specific are on point. So, so accurate. Use them because they are very, very much in, uh, on point. You can use them to target these levels, higher time frames, wait for specifics such as this candle. Once you've got the clarity, all you need to do is look for the pullbacks for upside or what have you. And that's where it becomes very simple. So 
let me have a look into gold. Obviously, again, with FOMC and stuff coming this week, we've already started to see with the Euro news that the, the and there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on here with the anticipation of what they're going to do with rates and this, that, this, that, and the other. So, what we can see from a weekly perspective, right? We already know, and it's already been clear. We've established this multiple times. We spoke about the downside since 1941 or whatever it was, basically way up at this screen over here. We already know after we saw this, the heavy trades I took from 60s down to uh, target was 60, um, 1680. Obviously, I bottled it and closed at 1700, but fear, that was still clearly enough, right? So, at that point, we've now seen that hit. We've tapped into that. Strangely enough, the news comes out right over at that key level of interest that has been a factor all the way across outside the screen left as well. And it just so happens the, the, from an institutional perspective, we start to see news come out that clearly changes the factors that are going on. Is this just a short term relief before an absolute hammering down to 1530? In my opinion, that could easily be a factor. Dependent on what we see on Wednesday in regards to the news US dollar-wise, we may well start to see this as a factor. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying sell to 1530. I'm not a dumb twat like those on Instagram that just shout XX and X. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we've already established our targetability. That's done. Job's finished. That's fine. Now we need to establish why is this starting to do this? Are we starting to see it based simply on fundamental behavior or is it short-term relief before further heavy downside when they start to bring out different rates, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're looking at from a, you know, from a, from a let's say, a, a global economy perspective and how that's going to be, a, a, you know, effective going forward. Like I said, use the fundamental outlook, which is provided by the guys. It's very much a good point to start looking at. I mean, based on what we can see here, we start in pullbacks. We've seen a daily support form. Yes, you'd expect to see some form of upside after a candle such as this. No question. Doesn't mean it's buys now. It realistically would be more sensible to start to see some pullbacks to then start to respect things like 1700, which we know is clearly impactful, as is this low. But again, if we start to break down below 1700, realistically, you could more than likely look to target 1680 and continue that move way further than you expected. But again, that'll be interlinked with the news that's coming on Wednesday. So prior to Wednesday, I'd be very cautious of this becoming a pullback for heavy downside. Let's say I'm not saying we're coming up to 1780, but you see what I mean. Just take into account that obviously with this coming from the Euro news and then ultimately starting to see things, with, you know, your man with COVID, et cetera. This is where all these things seem to link together to create this upside. Everyone turns into, oh, I'm the buyer of gold. Now, yeah, fine. It's given the buyers that there was so many people buying gold in all this area because they just expect more upside. Yeah, fine. Now they're starting to see some recovery. Is it going to be longer term? For me personally, I don't think so at this stage based on the way things are set up. Fundamentally, I don't believe so. But I can't be sure to say it. I can't just say, right, buys make sense. That isn't enough to say buys make sense longer term. At this stage, we can clearly see that we have created a support. We're starting to see some upside. Is it simply, like I said, a light relief before we see some range and break down with some other catalysts later in the week or into next um, into the next month? That's more than likely the case. The new, F the new NFP next month, for example, FOMC later this week, clearly is going to be a factor. So don't just get carried away on your, you know, your super low time frames trying to catch every five pips. Just clearly understand what's happening in the market right now and pay attention to the bigger picture at this stage because clearly, based on our weeklies and monthlies, if you want to sell this candle, want to buy this candle, you're asking for trouble at this stage. What the basic understanding of, let's say, trading is everyone sees this and they go, oh, buys make sense now because we hit the lows. All right, cool. But what if we don't? This is where you've got to have a little bit more knowledge and understanding and clearly understand just because we see one candle that's bullish that does not mean we're now coming up here. If we do, I think you've got enough time to figure it out and take your time. We do not need to catch pick number one of the move. We need to use clarity in the market and approach it in a sensible manner that can clearly give us more sensible, accurate outcomes instead of it being, let's just take every possible option that comes in the market, right? So use your common sense. Look to utilize the New York session as normal because there will be some solid movements there. Wednesday is going to be an important day. Use that to your advantage and pay attention clearly because that will be the factor, I think, that will start to determine clearer direction at this stage looking at lower time frames things like four hours one hour stuff you can clearly see structural change in this position whether or not you want to argue pullbacks or not this is more from a session trade perspective so you know breaking above certain levels heavy rejections we can start to look for pullbacks to try and take trades into and continue up to specific areas of resistance etc and our support structures as as per it's very straightforward it's not complicated but the thing is we've just got to keep in mind that this may well just be a bigger factor for further downside so just be aware when you've got such a negative market and it hasn't just happened over one week and let's not get carried away. We're talking four months now. We get on for half a year to an extent, looking at the rejection of the news, which was obviously the, the war, et cetera, at the beginning. 
we can clearly see in essence, realistically, we've had five months of downside. So just remember, if you're trying to take buys and hold them, just, you know, do the math, seriously. You know, it's pretty clear at this point, you know, after pretty much four and a half months of negativity, you just need to be a little bit more wise in the market, right? Let's not get carried away and just think, oh, buys make sense now. Because realistically, they don't. Until you start to see some solid rejections, i.e., if you go through things like the daily, it's very straight. Weekly is enough, actually. You can go and see things like this. Once you start to see things like this, that's clearly something we pay attention to. Hence the reason we are in this zone. It doesn't just mean we're going to get to here and do this, though, does it? Because we clearly didn't. And we haven't yet. So if we do start to see structural change, for example, daily is pulling back, creating higher supports, breaks of resistances, and we can start to identify directional change, then we can use that in the lower time frames and look to hold some of our longer, uh, some of our lower time frame entries a little bit longer. But if you, I would suggest this week specifically at this point, if you're looking to take buys, I would look to be getting out the market ASAP. If you're looking to try and hold longer, be very aware that the chance of it getting pulling back to your entries are going to be very high in this scenario. So you know we just got to use a bit of common sense to make sure we're not doing kind of dumb stuff in the market. But like I said, at this point, based on our current monthlies and weeklies, I'm not just going to simply look to take buys, but we do have a support formation based on a weekly. This may well, like I said, be a pullback before further downside. But again, we're not here to predict. We're here to use facts, right? So we've got to understand realistically until we break this level, which we already know 1680 is going to be a key factor. It has been for months and months and months and pretty much years at this point. We know that coming into that area is going to be very dangerous for selling because we should have been selling from up here down, right? Or below here where I was looking at sales from 16, oh, sorry, from 1760 down, gave me the opportunity to get to this area. It did, it worked well. Now, at this point, we've ended that move. And are we going to see continuation of this move? Or are we going to start to see a factual upside where we start to see structural change and obviously breakouts and heavy rejections from places like 1700 and maybe even as deep as 1680 again? Because in essence, this whole range now is dictated to by this whole box, which is based on our weeklies, right? So we may well see further downside, but we may require some, because this is such a heavy area of interest all the way across the board, we may require further liquidity before a bust down. Basically, that's about what we're looking at. And that's when you can start looking at potential areas at maybe 1530 from a bigger picture for those guys that like that type of thing. But that will be in conjunction with fundamental behavior going in that nature as well as just general price movement. So we need to keep that in, in, in mind, obviously, with things like gold or equities and stuff like that. We do need to understand that with all the things that are going on now with interest rates, inflation, et cetera, et cetera, there is huge impactful news coming up and, and it will continue that way for the next God knows how many years. And it could easily change at any given point, right? We already know if people are discussing things, not necessarily whether it's facts and it's actually been done yet, for example, interest rates have been raised or dropped or whatever. It's the discussion and the fear surrounding that type of stuff. So the fear factor of, for example, if we're going to change X, this what, what's that going to do in the market? So people will jump in and out and things will change. People will move money from one place to another. And that's where we'll see the volatility in the market. It doesn't necessarily mean just because the interest rates changed today, we're going to see it now. All these things can easily be priced in miles, miles and miles ahead of these times because people are talking about and planning ahead to, you know, global economy needs to be fixed in theory. Whether it gets fixed or not, it's a different discussion. You know, we will have plenty of discussion points about that in our live sessions, I'm sure. But when it comes to that stuff, we just need to understand that these things, whether these downside, people can just predict it's a pullback before further. It's so whatever. You can look at it from a global macro scale, whatever. Either way, we still need factuals, right? And once we've got, for example, interest rate, this is or FOMC, FOMC details and la, 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 we can start to use that as for continuations, as for is it going to just be a short-term relief before further upside, downside? Then we can start to, once we've got factual data, such as a weekly structural position that was here that got broken down by a daily candle, simply sells from that position became extremely simple. Once that was done, yes, in conjunction with news, but that daily candle that was we spoke about last week was the clear clarity in regards to a potential confirmation to then look for continuation into the rest of the move, which has been happening for months up until now. But too many people, unfortunately, get carried away trying to bust every single trade possible in area number one for weeks and weeks and weeks, where some of those that are a little bit more sensitive and understanding of the market and seen it multiple times will just be like, all right, cool, this is a bullshit place to trade. Let's just sit back and see what's up. And let's concentrate on maybe a separate pair. Or maybe we should go and identify where I could be improving as an individual and starting to work on things that would help my technique and help my approach to the market and my discipline. They're the things that we could be doing instead of trying to chase trades every day. Because in essence, everyone comes to the market thinking they're a trader, where actually the majority of people should be coming to the market to identify where are your improvements on a regular, not 
how much trade do I need to be at the session each day to take trades, to take trades, to take trades. When you miss a trade, instead of looking to jump into the next possible one that shows up, instead of looking for the next possible one that shows up, you are, should be asking questions about what was or not in that trade that everyone else got involved in. They're the questions as an individual you should be asking and looking for. You've got to ask why. You've got to understand where your improvements are going to come from. And that isn't going to come from just trading every single possible fucking range possible and putting yourself in the worst possible positions when you've got little to no knowledge in the first place. It's never going to work out long term. And that's where, unfortunately, all the, you know, the whole Instagram lifestyle guru type people will not talk about that. And, and people that really trade and obviously those of us that have been around for, you know, five, six, seven years now on social media doing it pretty much on a legitimate basis day by day it's very clear that them guys do actually know what they're doing by now. You know, there's a lot of us that have been around for a long time now. I don't need to name names, but we all know who they are. You've got some very, very great places. You can look at some solid fundamental behaviors and, and, and advice from certain places. You can look for very good lower time frame understanding as well. You can look for lots of things there in the market. And obviously you've got the, some of the bigger streamers that have been around again for years and years. I mean, we've all been here the same amount of time. And what we've got to understand is, and guys are still here. None of them are flexing and none of them really need to gain that traction at this point. They're just there putting out facts and figures and this is what we should and shouldn't be doing. So take the advice, like I said, utilize your time better as an individual and start to really on identify where is your improvements going to come from if you're just physically going to look and search at trades. Yes, you can argue the more trades you take, the more you can take losses and start to understand them. However, you don't need to lose in the first place. You could utilize your time better and start to identify where I could actually be putting my efforts to understand how I should not lose so often and start to look at how I could actually put myself in a better position instead of getting carried away with the fucking dumb twats on Instagram that just want to take trades every five seconds. Understand trading is not about trading, trading every five minutes. It's about understanding the market and its behaviors and actually being very professional and mature in your approach, which will keep you safe long term. And in theory, should protect your capital unless you do dumb stuff like over risk, which is clearly a very basic concept that a lot of people can't establish. So if you're one of them people that are watching this, I mean, you've just got to make sure you've got your solid structural approach in the morning. If you haven't got things right and you're a little bit concerned with your approach and you're having struggles with certain concepts, your simple job is just to ask the question, you know, ask the question because that's what you should be at a live session for each and every day. Or if you're watching this on YouTube or something, it's about reaching out and asking a question or joining the community, not mine because it's closed. You know, at this point, there's no way to enter what I'm doing now. So but this is the stage where you guys need to just use the free information that's online. There's multiple, multiple places. And even for those in the community, it's not just what we've got here. But when you're in the community, you do have now multiple, multiple people around you who are at a level that can clearly establish a, a, a rapport where you can actually use them to advantage, which is what we should be doing on a regular basis. So please use that going forward. Like I said, your are in dollar as well. I'll just quickly touch on something that, you know, we've talked about now. We all know that I've been looking at this for a long period of time now, and we're starting to see again the, the, the continuation of this downside. I've still got areas of interest here, which is clearly showing signs of interest. Sorry, clearly showing signs of progression so the downside is still giving us the downside continuation after the heavy news obviously that's given us a factor as well there's a pull up to the upside then we started the continuation i'm just i'm not keen on this at this point still based on this factor i don't expect this just to keep pushing at this point i'm not just guessing but at this point i can't just simply take sales i mean my selling opportunity should have been up here i wasn't looking for sales all i'm doing is planning this for september and it's actually given us a great opportunity now so if we do start to clearly see now daily candles closing up in this area here dailies not weeklies daily candles up there that will start to give us an area to look at us from a targetable perspective looking for pullbacks to then target this and then ultimately turn weekly candles this way get into great trades here to hold longer term to here if possible now this is clearly speculation at this point the downside is clear if you look at it on a higher time frame the downside is clearly a change uh, sorry it's clearly an overall bigger factor we are continuing the downside move and it's very clear at this stage i'm not looking to buy the lows or guest bottoms or all that bullshit that people do i'm still working in a structured manner as normal the last quarter of the year for this is a very good opportunity we can use that to advantage and if you put the work in now you can start to look at them things but again that's what for example instead of me jumping in trades each and every morning because i have to take a trade because i want to be like those on instagram or wherever I'm putting my work and utilizing my time better by waiting for the things that I've looked and seen over the years, which I know your news in love offers some very good opportunities towards the end of September onwards. So why am I not putting my time into it now in June, May until that time? And then if it does show progression, that's where instead of trading at say gold every day until I see the opportunity, then the opportunity shows up now and take the training works out just fine. 
while I'm waiting, I could be trading something else, or I could be you those that you know are beginning. Obviously, you should just be concentrating on one or two pairs, right? At the most, one pair probably with the specific identification of trying to understand different time frames within that pair and time frames within sessions. That's what you should be doing. But when you got to a progressive level, you've obviously got a little bit more patience. You've got a little bit more understanding that areas that you're training are not great. So buying at daily resistance all the time is never going to be a fun, a fun idea, right? I'm sure we agree. So at this position now, I could then utilize my time better instead of sitting there fapping around looking for trades on, you know, GJ buying into daily resistance. I might as well leave that alone for now. Understand that's not going to be a good day for me trying to trade in that area and then start to utilize my time better and start to ascertain things on different charts and different areas and learn in the background. Even at this level, I'm still doing that because I'm doing my homework right now for things that are potentially going to happen in September. Whether they not, whether they do or not, it makes no difference. I'm going to be ready regardless. You see what I mean? So I'm going to be ahead, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be stepping my game into that arena in September. And if the opportunity show, which I've seen over the last three, four, five years, that's something I can utilize because I've already put the work in. Now, if you're sitting there every day looking at trades, looking at trades, looking at trades, looking at trades, because I want to get rich quick, uh, you ain't going to last very long because that's unfortunately not going to work long term. But maybe short term relief, you gain a few quid here and now, it's great. But it's not necessarily sustainable long term. You just need to understand there was a lot more to it than just busting a little trade on a rejection on a one minute or five minute or a little. You've got to understand the whole market procedure and what's going on overall, the fundamentals behind it, and the basic understanding of you know how and when is safe to be in a trade. Once you can identify them things, your trading becomes a lot easier. You need, you'll step back at that point because you're being a lot more consistent. Your risk can go to whatever level you want at that point because obviously your consistency you know, based on the, you know, the data you keep to prove. It's not about win rate either at that point. It's more about the profitability. So are you in majority of your trades? Are you putting yourself in a profitable position? Are you in, are you efficient in your closures and your opportunities to manage that trade in regards to profitability, not the negative side, but the profitable side? Are you efficient in that? How can you improve your efficiency? They're the questions we should be asking on a daily basis or weekly basis, depending on how you want to work it. And that's where you can start to identify where individual progression should be, you know, directed what attention do I need to be put into what factor? Is it my analysis that letting me down? Is it my entry procedure? Is it my stop positioning? That's basic stuff, which in, to be fair, you guys in the community don't have that issue that often. Now it's more a case of, you know, concentrating on efficiency and, you know, patience and make, making sense of the situation overall. And, uh, you know, understanding things like the basic concepts of, you know, let's pay attention to when the news is coming, boys and girls. Let's not forget that we have a whole array of places in the whole of the internet where we can, find information about when we've got data release, for example. So when we've got data release, we already know that there may be some volatility coming in the next 10 minutes. Well, it's your choice whether you want to trade or not at that time, but those are a little bit more experienced. Maybe we'll wait for that to happen and then get involved after and follow the, the overall bigger picture continuation based on fundamental behavior. So there's a lot to go with. Obviously, that's about as much as we can do with the outlook because pretty much the charts themselves are pretty much in the same position as they were last week. We did have heavy moves. Do not overlook the fact that the things we pointed out last week did exactly the same biggest factor this week in my opinion two positions this area here this area here is going to be the biggest factor whatever time frame you want to look at this area here i would love to see supports above here to continue the higher range upside based on this being a daily range up here and the main lows of our structural monthly positions and stuff that would be very sensible however with this current downside, you may well get pullbacks to give targetability here and look for continuation. So we've got two opportunities at this point. Why? Because the move's already happening. And now we can identify it's already happening. We're already late to the party. So trying to jump in now, you're asking for a bit of a slap. So we need to realistically look for things like pullbacks for downside. We need to look for maybe structural positioning before we can target structural low positions or highs, depending on which way we direct. But the best thing to do at this stage, clearly based on our current position being a movement that we've missed at this stage if you have is to identify for example what do we get on the next daily candle do we see pushes into this area and we start to reject and see a support formation do we see a solid downside candle meaning targets are formed we can look for pullbacks from these areas of interest which we spoke about again on last week's webinar and then target the lows and look for more continuation will we see this or this this is the scenario we're in right now. You can't make it up any other way. That's fact. That's what it is. We have to just identify. Yes, it makes sense to look for further downside. But in reality, we should have been in this trade on Friday at some point to be in this trade already to manage accordingly. We now have great areas of interest that we can't realistically, if we're going to continue our downside, exceed. So if we break up above here, be very aware we do not have this scenario. And you take sales when you see the first five-minute candle here saying, oh, sales make sense, and then get fucking hammered. 
just be careful because clearly at that stage we would be in a bullish nature of move overall for the maybe the last four, eight, 12, 15 hours, what have you. So just keep that in mind. Don't get carried away. And just because we see that we expect this, we still need to use our common sense and just, yes, it makes sense at this current point to look for further downside. But based on some of the bigger pictures, we are clearly in an area of potential rejection, not just because of this, but go across and look at all the weekly outlooks and our daily positions and our weekly and monthly you know, rejectionable areas. Trying to trade into this is tough, so you should have been trading from here down. And if you do happen to break through, you're going to have an absolutely phenomenal trade. But for those that are not in the trade already, you can wait still and see what the daily candle does. If we see one that does, excuse me, that's an awful drawing. If we see a daily candle that does something similar to this, at that point, if you start to see a daily candle break down there, trust me, you just need pullbacks to hit this resistance to then target the lows and look for further downside. That will be simple, and that will be based on dailies. But once you've got that clarity, you can then start making moves in the market in your own manner and understand that. But either way, selling down at this area is always going to be tough. Why? Because of the higher time frames and our heavy rejections from multiple, multiple times at this area. As we saw multiple times in the past, we just need to use that to our advantage because we know it's there. It's not a surprise and it's something that's been a fact for a long time. Between 64 and around 61 and a half, sorry, 60 and a half, it's pretty much been the main range that we've had pretty much since April. So we've got to keep that in mind. Yes, we may get some further breakdowns, but our structural position, which is dictated to currently by this area here, based on the higher time frame, is where we're seeing multiple rejections. How many times do people take sales here and get an absolute paste in? Not because it didn't continue bearish, because of the lower time frames, the pullbacks on the lower time frames are more excessive in that area. Same as here, taking buys on lower time frames in here, the pullbacks are bigger. Even if it does go bullish, it's where you're going to find the inconsistencies in your approach and trading because the scenario of understanding my structural position, you're selling at the main lows, you know the pullbacks are more than likely going to be deeper and more, more effective, excuse me, and more uh, deeper and more apparent when you're at levels such as this. So when you come back to everyone's taking sales, do you think sales make sense? Yeah, well, they did, but they didn't on lower time frame because at the time you're trading, you know, the, the next 15 minute breaks, the, yeah, it pulls back hard ads because what it's trying to do is search for liquidity for further breaks because we can't break this level until we see things like that that are closed below. Then we can start to use that as clarity to say, right, okay, don't forget you're not an institutional trader. Gas needs to wait for the market to show you what's up and jump in on the party when the boys, when the big boys have done their job already. And at that point, you can maximize the moves you're in, regardless of what time frame you wish to use at that point. As long as you have clarity, you can use that to your advantage. Clarity will not come from the five minute chart here. Yes, on understanding, let's say overall, let's say daily movement, we can use that to our advantage. But that doesn't mean it sells long term. And when you're in an area of higher time frame rejection, as you can see here, when you can mark that stuff out weeks ahead of time and you start to see this, you know it's going to be on point. So you still need to be aware that if you're if you're trading around that area, it's going to be tough. That's all. It doesn't mean you can't sell it. It just means to know that if, if you're in an area where you've clearly got the opportunity to get rejections and stuff and you've seen it multiple times in the past, it doesn't mean buys either. It means just be aware you're selling in an area of heavy danger boys don't mean that the opposite of doing that doesn't mean boys make sense it means you probably need to sit wait and pay attention understand the huge difference between the mental attitude of someone that does trade which is you either got boys sells or i need to identify what's going on before i make a choice over a person that trades on the gram you either buy or you sell so when you see rejections down here you take boys not necessarily because that's not normally making sense that would make sense if you're trying to do it for the gram because you catch the best move of the day. However, if I see a couple of four hour candles there or heavy rejections from there and change the structure, maybe on a 15, 30 minute hour, I can clearly use that to my advantage and catch a bigger chunk of the move anyway, you see. So it's just about just paying attention to the areas you're trading into. Just because sales make more sense higher time frame doesn't mean we can just come to charts and press sell. And that's why everyone loses. And obviously, if it was that simple, we'd make millions and millions and millions. We'd all want, no one would be doing what we're doing right now. We'd just all be sitting at home with loads of money, right? Probably just sitting in the garden, chilling with a coffee lot most days, right? That's pretty much it. Anyone got questions that you want to go through? Because in reality, I don't want to go through that anymore. The majority of this was done last week, like I said, and uh, that's, that's pretty much an hour anyway from where I expected to do it. So if you guys have got any questions, obviously in the live sessions tomorrow and stuff and so on, you can discuss whatever you want. Um, I'm here all week. Um, I would assume this week, I think I'm not doing it. I don't think I've got any plans this week. I should be with you guys all week. But if there's anyone that's got anything else that would like to say anything, please do. Christian's done his um, weekly outlook as well. Blake will be doing the weekly midweek discussion points as such. Obviously, the things that we spoke about this week as well, 
the updates and things that we're doing this week, please pay attention. What we've got coming up this week is there. That's clear. Pay attention, show up. If you want to play poker at the weekend with the homies and you want to have a bit of a social time with us, make sure you add it in here. Say that you know if there's enough interest, we'll do a you know poker with a few games and a few quid to throw away or something. You know, we'll uh, have a few prizes, no doubt. But again, that's only if you've got enough interest. If not, man's going to play sim racing, which clearly at this point, boys and girls, if you haven't done already, go and do this. Go and check it out. Make sure I am doing a very, very big event soon, which you'll all be able to see. So if you haven't subscribed, go check it out because that's my bit of fun channel. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you on there. Or if not, I'm going to see you in the live sessions tomorrow. It should be great fun. So I'll see you there. Have a great weekend. Rest of it, shall I say. And I'll see you in the morning, boys. Girls. Ciao.